Hey guys, I'm Leg Day, and I'm here today to tell you about Paris Eternal, who the players are, who the coaches are, and what we can expect from them moving into the 2019 season of the Overwatch League. As one of eight expansion teams coming to Overwatch League in 2019 and the only European spot, there was a wealth of talent available to be selected by Paris Eternal for their roster, both in other Overwatch League teams like LA Valiant and Philadelphia Fusion, as well as a wealth of talent in contenders as well. And that's where a lot of the roster have come from. And that's why I'm making this video so you guys who might not know about these players who are going to be coming up into the Overwatch League for the first time, well, you might get to know something about them. Let's start off our look at the Paris Eternal roster by looking at the main tanks, LH Cloudy and Ben Best, both of whom were recruited from contenders, but Ben Best is a little bit more famous now that he has had a reasonably successful run with Team France in the Overwatch World Cup where he was playing as their main tank in a ghost centric meta we got to show off that Reinhardt an awful lot. Let's talk about the other side of the coin, LH Cloudy, former main tank for Team Giganti in Contenders Europe, who was a replacement for Fraggy when Fraggy went off to play for the Philadelphia Fusion. And he has met up against Ben Best in quite a few Contenders Europe matches where Giganti usually came out on top, but we're not sure whether we can really uh, pin that down onto the main tank play despite it being a huge part of these last few metas. But the really interesting thing about this tank line, players aside, is that they've picked two Reinhardt specialists. Usually if you pick up two main tanks, I'd expect that one would be specialized in either Winston or Aressa and another specialized in Reinhardt so that you are more resistant to meta changes where the main tank changing can change how an entire team composition works. If we just think about the differences between a 3-3 and a dive composition that came before of differences between Winston and Reinhardt. So I find it very strange that they have picked these two to work in tandem, but LH Cloudy doesn't have a bad Winston, it was always serviceable in the team of Giganti, but serviceable and good Winstons don't really stand out that much in the Overwatch League. When you're up against the likes of Gesture, of Mano, and you have the top tier of Winstons, I don't know if that's going to cut it if a dive meta comes along for Paris Eternal. Personally, I'd expect LH Cloudy to be starting over Ben Best in this roster simply because his Winston seems a little bit more reliable from what I know about these two players in their current state. Of course, it's been a while since they've been picked up. There might have been some significant grinding happening that may have given one of these players a better Arissa than the other or the other a better Winston instead, but I'm not sure about that. However, both of these players do have some synergy with the coaching that is available. We do see Ben Best having worked with Damon before, of course, on Team France, and Sata and Alex Cloudy worked together for the best part of the uh, Contenders 2018 season, so potentially those two synergies could work out very well in buffing the Paris Eternal tank line. Overall, in a presumably stagnant meta, I would rate the tank line as being pretty strong because both LH Cloudy and Best are pretty top tier Reinhardts, and of course they have come from European region, which is very well known for its tank play. 3-3 three, three has flourished here, and I think both of these tanks will be very well able to lead those 3-3 three, three phalanxes with their Reinhardts, and they have the best coaching behind them when it comes to those 3-3 three, three tactics as well. Okay, let's move away from main tanks that will stay on the front line. We've got two potential flex tanks on the roster of Paris Eternal. Those be Nico and Fincy. Nico is actually listed as DPS on Wikipedia, but I imagine he could be taking over Diva duties given his previous roles on Eagle Gaming as a Diva, and especially effective in the Ghost composition. Eagle Gaming, I'd personally rate as the greatest Ghost team in the world, so if you're moving into a 3-3 meta and you don't put him on your Diva. Might be a few problems, but Fincy there is also a pretty good option. He's got a very serviceable D.Va, but I don't know if either of these guys really have a huge amount of Zarya chops. Like, we've got a load of fantastic Zarya's in the Overwatch League, and it's been a while since we've really seen Fincy play consistently, and that may well be a problem. Both of these flexes, of course, do have their respective DPS carries like Tracer, Genji, and in Fincy's case, Soldier 76. But it's worth noting that if you're going to play Genji on Paris Eternal, you are going to be competing with Shadowburn for that spot. So Nico and Shadowburn may well be tussling there. I imagine we could see a Genji come out from Nico if it was in a kind of meta where you want to run a Rhine and a Zaya, but no Diva, because it may well be that Shadowburn has a better Zaya than Nico, and Nico's Genji may prove reasonably equal compared to Shadowburn's. Returning to Fincy though, unfortunately we don't know a huge amount of where his heroes are at the moment because he just hasn't been seen to consistently play in professional environments for a long time. After he went to LA Valiant having left Olsen Hungary in EU Contenders Season 1, he mostly rode for Bench because they simply had better options available and we're going to have to see what kind of heroes and what sort of skill level they can be pulled out. I imagine his D.Va will be a very trusty and reliable resource for Paris Eternal, but where is Zaya at remains to be seen. 
So concluding in regards to the off-tank line of Paris Eternal, I'm pretty happy that we will have a very serviceable D.Va call between Fincy and Nico, especially if we run into a 3-3 meta in Stage 1 of Overwatch League 2019. We know that Nico has been up there with the best of them when it comes to the 3-3 D.Va play, and I imagine he'll be an invaluable asset to Paris Eternal during one of those metas. Moving over to the DPS line of Paris Eternal, this is definitely their main powerhouse. They've got proven European champions from Overwatch League, Suen from LA Valiant, and Shadowburn from Philadelphia Fusion, with very respectable hero pools between them, Soon playing a load of hitscan heroes, and of course, Shadowburn on the projectiles. And if we look at a 3-3 meta, I imagine we may actually see if both of these guys were played, but Soon would be taking over the Brigitte, we would see Shadowburn playing on the Zaya instead. Both of those, pretty good roles for both of those players. But for many people, the question mark will hang over Polish superstar and DPS maestro Danie, who's relatively unknown in the greater Overwatch scene. He has competed in European contenders before, but his team never really got that far. They never really seemed to coalesce around the powerhouses, but he always managed to, in his own solo way, bring out these sort of like showreels of great DPS players, whether it be on Farah or Tracer or Genji or other heroes. His hero pool is immense, and what's going to be great about Danie, even if he isn't played as a starter for the entire time is that he will be able to replace either Soon or Shadowburn and still have a hero pool that can really fit into the compositions that are required because he plays all of these heroes to such a high standard. And not only that, Danya's hero pool, if paired with Shadowburn, does mean there's a potential for Paris Eternal to run double projectile offenses. People like Hanzo and Farah paired together could be incredibly effective when you need a huge amount of long-range damage isn't going to be suffering from damage fall-off. We don't know what future murders will look like, but it does seem like Paris Eternal have got pretty much every eventuality covered. If you're going double hit scan as well, Danya is also there. He's got himself a fantastic tracer and a fantastic Widowmaker to pair with soon. Though one of the primary advantages I do give Paris Eternal's DPS line over other expansion teams is that Soon and Shadowburn, they are used to Overwatch League. They are LAN proven. They've been able to go through that training, that scrim schedule for a year already. And other expansion teams, when they've picked up new players from contenders, they may not have that kind of expertise that Soon and Shadowburn do where they really can clutch up on LAN. So potentially that may well be what makes the difference in a couple of maps and matches for Paris Eternal. Okay, and finally for roster discussions, let's move over to the support line three enlisted in this case, Cruz, Hip, and more recently Gray. I imagine Cruz and Hip may well be the starters here, and we've got a pretty down pack. Cruz has got a fantastic Lucio and Mercy as he showed off in the World Cup, and with previous Boston Uprising Academy team Toronto Esports after he was poached from EU contenders, not that we're salty about that at all, and Hip has been showing off a fantastic synergy with a lot of GOATS compositions with any of the three flex supports you would expect was Inyata, the Anna, and the Moira all played to a high standard. He's a pretty uh, he's a pretty dangerous Inyata, can frag out pretty hard, and his Anna's got some pretty good shots as well, so we'll have to see what those two can bring to the table. Big question here, of course, is synergy. We're not aware of any moments in which Hip and Cruz have worked together in the past, so they're going to be scrimming pretty hard to try and get themselves synergized with each other, but one of the other things this support line really brings to the table is for professional level of DPS play as well, and that's Cruz on the Genji, he played that for quite a while for E United, who won European contenders at one point, so it's definitely no slouch in terms of where he may measure up in terms of comparison to other EU DPS, and Grey, when he played for Team Portugal, also had a professional level Sombra to bring out as well, so there's a lot of potential circumstances in which, in a DPS heavy meta, Paris Eternal could leverage that hero pool that their supports do have. At any rate, I would rate this support line as being incredibly meta resistant given Cruz's pretty equal aptitudes of both Mercy and Lucio as high level professional support. So I think that given any meta, we will see Paris Eternal coping quite well in terms of how their supports are going to be doing. And of course, should they require it, Gray's also there in the background. Even he could be a starter because himself and Hip, they could trade blows in terms of many supports. I haven't seen them directly compete against each other before, so I'm not sure which one will be starting. But of course, you can can always have someone on the bench who can relieve stress on your team and try and make sure that burnout doesn't occur by swapping in for a couple games here and there.
But the meat and potatoes of Paris Eternal is definitely the backroom stuff that they have acquired. They've got Damon, they've got Seda, they've got Fefe, and they've got Kaikai. Kai Kai, Kai and Damon having come from other Overwatch League teams so they can accurately train these players to deal with the pressures that are there as well as know what happens in these training schedules. Meanwhile, you've got Fefe and you've got Seda who are going to be coming in for some specific coaching practices. Fefe previously coached Eagle Gaming, which I touted earlier as the best 3-3 team in the world. World. If we move into stage one and it's a 3-3 meta, I think Fefe is going to be a huge asset to Paris Eternal. And he's worked with a couple of these guys before. He's worked with Hip on Eagle Gaming. He's worked with Nico on Eagle Gaming. And the three of them will bring that expertise with them and they'll be able to train Paris Eternal to very effectively proffer a 3-3 composition that could compete with the best teams in the league. But there's another large concern for me, and that will be Team Synergy. Despite the large backroom staff, I feel like some of these guys may not have played together for a long time and may well take a while to try and synergize together. And when you're going up against teams in Overwatch League who not only have been together for a year, but have excelled in that year previously, then you're going to be facing a tall order to try and be as good as them, especially in the first stages. So what may end up happening is that there's kind of these leveling of power levels for Paris Eternal because in a 3-3 meta I feel like Paris Eternal will be in their best place as a team to really excel in terms of their individual prowesses and where the coaching has its most power but over time of course they will synergize and they'll be able to catch up to the synergy of a lot of other teams so they'll gain power in that aspect but if the meta changes they may well falter in that aspect. So where Paris Eternal are going to place in terms of league rankings is actually a huge mystery to me and may well change very very much over time if i could predict one thing for paris eternal was that they're gonna put their non-starting main tank into some kind of hyperbolic time chamber just have them grind winston forever waiting for the fateful day when the dive meta returns because after all dive meta was pioneered by a lot of the french guys who are in this roster like nico and soon and when you look at Soon and Shadowburn as a DPS duo, and I think about Tracer Genji dives, there are a few that will be as dangerous as Paris Eternals will be, and they may all be able to excel in that matter, contrary to what I said before, if they can build up a Winston Diva tank line, which is formidable. But that is a very big if. So there you have it guys, an introduction to the Paris Eternal potential 3-3 Kings of the Overwatch League 2019 season, but we'll have to see how they do and what their coaches can do to coalesce these powerful players into one unified force. If you have any comments or suggestions, feel free to leave them below. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter and whatnot, and I will see all of you guys when the season starts and I start my analysis.